you can improve your Windows performance and solve some of those issues and get a lot of hard drive space back by simply following these steps. You see, in order for Windows to run efficiently, it needs to read and write information to both your computer's memory and to the hard drive. And it does this using something called temporary files and cache files. And no, they are not the same thing. Both are important and both need to be cleaned up as they can become corrupt and cause issues. So let's fix that. I know this makes some people nervous. So I suggest you start by creating a Windows restore point. Right in your Windows search, go down and type there restore and then you'll see an app called create a restore point. The first thing we're going to do when that pops up, we click on configure. And now we're going to see how much space our previous restore points have actually taken up of our hard drive. I've set mine to take a maximum of 2%. You can turn this all the way up, but then all the way down, somewhere between 2 and 5% is good. Now, if everything is working perfectly fine, let's go ahead and delete all the old restore points. You cannot undo this, so make sure that everything's working perfectly fine, and then click on continue. Now, no more restore points are saved. You've got that hard drive space back. So the next thing we want to do is create a brand new restore point. Now let's give our restore point a name, something that we'll recognize. Remember, you've removed all the old restore points that your computer is working perfectly fine. So now let's get going. Okay, now it's time to take care of some of those temporary files as they're just occupying space for really no reason at all. And back to the Windows search we go. And this time we're going to type percentage temp percentage. And you'll see this little file folder that pops up. Simply open that. And in here, you get a whole bunch of files. Press Control A again to select all and then press delete. Now you may see this kind of message that you need additional permission and then simply click on continue and let it just do its thing. Okay, when that's done at the top, click on local disk, then select the Windows folder that pops up underneath that. And this time I'm going to scroll all the way down until we're going to see software distribution. Open that up. In here, there's a folder called download. Click on that. Now here you're going to see a bunch of files and folders and all these are, are bits and pieces of software that either has already been updated or the stuff that you needed to install in order to update your Windows or your various apps. But because you've already done that, well, we can get rid of these files that are just taking up space. Okay, let's move on to File Explorer, which keeps history tab on the files that you access. This can be a little bit frustrating, especially if you're moving files around the whole time. So just check this out. So let's open up the File Explorer, and then at the top, you'll see something called a view. Click on that. On the right hand side, you'll see options. Click on that. And now you'll see a section called privacy. And here, some of your options may be ticked or unticked. The one that we're interested in is clear file explorer history. Right, next up is something called Prefetch. These are a set of files that help your computer launch your apps a little bit faster as part of the app is already processed. Now, this can also cause some issues, so it's perfectly safe to delete as the next time you open up the app, it will simply create new clean Prefetch files. In your Windows search, type the RUN and then press on Enter. You'll see this box that pops up. Then in the box, type Prefetch and then click on OK. When this message comes up to say you don't have permission, click on continue. And here you're going to see all the prefetch files that are in here. On your keyboard, press Ctrl and A to select all and then press delete. You'll see a couple of these that pop up. Simply skip over them. It means you cannot delete them because they're currently in use. The rest can be gone. Now it's obviously much safer to install apps using the Microsoft Store instead of just getting these off some random website. Sometimes the Microsoft Store itself can be slow and sluggish and it turns out there's a utility that's actually built into Windows to reset the store and flush out the cache. Back to the Windows search we go and we're going to type there CMD and you will see command prompt. Right Right click on that and then run as administrator. Now when this pops up, type the WS reset.exe and then press enter. Now it may look like it's not doing anything for a bit, but then the Microsoft Store actually pops up showing you that it's been reset. And as you can see, when you click through it, it's actually much more usable and then much less sluggish than before. And since we still got the command prompt open, let's go in there and type ipconfig space forward slash flush DNS and press enter. What this does is that it clears the DNS entries from your local cache and perhaps resolves some of those internet issues too. 
But what happens if you're still having issues or you simply don't want to keep doing these steps yourself? Then you need to download System Mechanic from Iola, who is today's sponsor. It's like having your own personal tech mechanic inside your Windows computer that is proactively fixing and optimizing your computer using artificial intelligence. It even works on Windows 7 right up to Windows 11 and runs natively on 64-bit machines. I mean, just check this out. Firstly, it does a massive scan and identifies all the areas that it can help with. Then it allows you to repair those items. I especially like the fact that it can repair registry issues. Those are typically finicky for you to manually deal with. Next up, it scans your network looking for devices that could have some security vulnerabilities. It even looks at Bluetooth connected devices to ensure that the devices that need to be connected are, and nothing is actually spoofing the network or the data that you share out there. Now, when I fired up real-time boost, it discovered that I should be minimizing the data being written to the hard drive and with a simple tick it fixed that for me with net booster you get the option to boost your internet setting and get a more stable and a more reliable environment without you manually messing around with the registry yourself and with on-demand boost your windows get that extra oomph when you need it for those seriously hungry apps and games that demand much more out of your computer i have a link in the description below and you get a 60 percent off when you use the code liron Whilst Windows tools are great, they're just not as comprehensive as system mechanics, so definitely worth checking out whilst we continue to explore some of those built-in Windows tools. Now, Windows has a tool called Storage Sense that can automatically get rid of some of these files for you, but you definitely want to change some of the settings there. This time, we're not going to go to the search. We're going to right-click on the Windows icon and then choose Settings, then choose System. Now choose storage. Now this is the storage sense and you'll see that storage sense can automatically free up space. Make sure that that is absolutely on, but click on configure the storage sense now. And here you'll see, look, when do you want me to run storage space? You don't wanna wait until you have low disk space. I like to run mine every week. You can choose yours to run every day. Temporary files, I wanna delete my temporary files, make sure that's ticked. And these next two options, delete files in my recycle bin, no, I want to control that, so I say never, and the delete files in my download folders, also never. And of course, we've got the good old disk cleanup tool, which we've had for years. If you still haven't used this tool, go into your Windows search and type the disk, D-I-S-K, click on disk cleanup. The first thing I do is I click on the cleanup system files, and all you have to now do is go through each one of these line items these are safe to be removed. Simply put a tick box next to each one of them. And the more data that you add to be removed, the more of your hard drive space you can actually reclaim. I'm gonna get back 4.74 gigs. Oh, if you're running Spotify on your computer, especially if you've been doing so for many, many years, well, there's a lot of files that simply just clog up your computer for no reason, so just do this. And back to the Windows search we go, and this time we're gonna type percentage app data percentage. And then you'll see a folder that looks like this. Simply click on that to open. When that pops up, what we wanna do is we wanna click on the app data in the toolbar, and then we wanna select local. And next up, you're gonna see a whole bunch of folders. We wanna scroll all the way down until we're gonna see the Spotify folder. When you spot that, open that up, and underneath this folder, you'll see something called data. Click on that. All these folders in here can safely be deleted press Control A on your keyboard, and then press the delete. Here you'll notice that this sometimes gets stuck at 99% and doesn't let you continue. No problem, simply click on the X and close that down. Now, the next time we open up Spotify, what it's gonna do is gonna pull down all the information that it needs for my current configuration and what I have, ignoring all those years and years of legacy stuff we don't need. Now, finally, most browsers have a clear cache option which is built into it, and here is how you do it in Chrome. Most browsers work the same way, but in Chrome, three little dots at the top, click on more tools, clear browsing data, simply click on that. Now here, I actually wanna keep my browsing history, so I'm gonna untick that. I wanna keep my cookies and other data. I'm just interested in removing the images and files from all time. I wanna reclaim 142 megabytes back by simply doing this. Let me know in the comments if you have other tips or settings that you use to help run your computer smoother. Also check out this video over here where I show you about shutting down your computer. It's not what you think. Also check out this video over here that YouTube thinks you should watch. Hit the head down here to subscribe and I'll see you in this video or this video or I'll see you in both. Let's go.